Hello and welcome or welcome back. Today we are going to discuss the books that I read in April and what I'm going to be reading in this gorgeous month of May. Today is May 1st. Um, something I'm changing about this um, little video series is I don't know that I'm going to keep um, bringing makeup into it. Um, so the the project pan thing is not working out the way that I thought it would. Um, I've given it a couple months and it's just not pushing me to use my makeup like I thought I would. So I'm going to reevaluate and approach it differently, I think. But um, for now, I'm just going to leave makeup out of it. We're not going to talk about it this month. We are just going to talk about what I read. So let's get into it. And uh, if you did watch my video talking about what I was reading in April, you will know it was an ambitious reading goal. And I, the only, and I will say, I read everything but one book. Yeah, you heard me right. I read everything but one book. I was so fucking good this month. Oh my god. It's like motivated me so much to read even more. Um, now, and not everything I read was a winner, but I read some good stuff this month. So let's talk about it. The first thing, so actually yesterday I um, had several books left in my stack and I decided I was going to spend yesterday because my mother-in-law had Edgar. She was keeping him overnight. Kitten is out of town and what else was I going to do? So I decided I was going to push myself before I went to bed to read three of the books that were still left in my stack. One I knew I couldn't get to, it was too long, but the other three were short enough that it was plausible and I got them all done. I did them all. I'm so proud of myself. Um, so the last one that I read last night is called Love Struck. And this is a comic written by Dennis Hopeless and Kevin Mello. And my husband wanted me to read this because he particularly enjoyed this. And he wanted me to give it a shot. He thought maybe I would like it too. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I give it two stars. Um, for me personally, um, while I am very much a cynical human being, I also am quite a romantic. Um, and while I, I don't know, like I understood where it was going. I got the point and I appreciate the overall message at the end. I just, I don't know. I, I thought the first like two thirds of it were incredibly cynical and like I didn't like the way it made me feel. Um, I have very strong opinions on love and sex and all that which we won't get into but um, I didn't like the way it approached those things in the first two thirds but I appreciate the ending and like the message in the end. So I, I get it. I. Like the more I talk about it, like, <sighs> this is why I don't do reviews. <laughs> um, I do understand what it was trying to say. And while I appreciate the, the message in the end, I didn't relate to any of the characters. I didn't really care about the characters. Um, I thought half of them were really just annoying. Um, I didn't really care for them. Um, the main character did nothing for me. Um, I think she was just there to look pretty, you know, um, they have her like half naked practically in every single, like on every single page. So it's like, she's there for sex appeal and I didn't really relate to her character at all. Um, yeah, it just felt pretentious, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It felt pretentious and I... I don't know. I didn't really care for it. It was all right, but I didn't care for it too much. So 
not my thing. I think maybe I'll ask Kenton what comics he has that he doesn't care for because for me and him we have realized that we have such different tastes a lot of the time when it comes to the things we like um, when it comes to books, comics, TV shows. We tend to be very different in our tastes um, and the things he loves I tend to really strongly dislike and the things I enjoy he tends to not care for. Um, but we have been trying to get the other to explore our interests so that we can, you know, maybe find common ground. Um, and we have found things that we enjoy. I love Breaking Bad. Um, he was kind of into American Horror Story. Um, he's not as big a fan of it as I am, but he enjoyed what he saw. Um, we're also watching Demon Slayer, that anime. Um, like, we have stuff. He doesn't read a lot, so I can't think of books that we share uh, a love for. But uh, Fight Club. Fight Club is one. Fight Club, we both love the movie and the book. Um, so we have things that we both share at least a like for, if not a love for. So that's not... Like, we do enjoy things. We do enjoy some of the same things. But um, as a general rule, I think if it's something that I don't enjoy, I am more likely to recommend it to him and vice versa. At least I, I wish he was more likely to recommend things to me that he doesn't like because then I would probably like them. So yeah, um, but totally fine. He enjoyed it, I didn't. The next book, one that I also read last night, um, this was a extremely short read. Um, and I mean, to be fair, this is like, a children's series, I guess. Um, and that is the Zenda series. This is Zenda, A New Dimension. This is the second book in the series. And I'm reading through this because it is a series that I read in my childhood, forgot everything about it practically, and found it again, um, which was, I, I found it after looking for years. I could not get this series off my mind. I had always wanted to find it. Now that I found it, I am planning on reading it all over again and hanging on to the books because it's a fun series. Um, but I gave that three stars, one for nostalgia, two for my actual opinion on the book. It It's definitely not a series made for adults. It's very on the nose, um, but it is still like very nostalgic for me. So I gave it a star just for the nostalgia and then two stars for what I actually thought of the writing and the story. So that's my opinion. All right. And then I read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy yesterday, or I finished it. So this is five novels in one. This is um, the Barnes and Noble special edition of the series. And there's a short story at the end. Um, so I'm not reading, I'm not making a goal to read this entire thing in one month. I'm just reading them one book at a time. And last month was my, my goal was to read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is the first book. And I did it and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I do not normally like sci-fi. Um, it's just a genre I have come to dislike. Um, and generally if it is, if something is described as sci-fi, I kind of write it off. But I had heard that um, Douglas Adams, yeah, uh, he has a similar writing style to Terry Pratchett, who I really like. Um, the difference is Terry Pratchett writes fantasy or wrote fantasy and Douglas Adams, I think he's still alive, I don't know, writes science fiction, but they have a very similar a uh, sense of humor and writing style. So I wanted to try for that. And it's also a very popular series. It's a very famous series. Um, and I really enjoyed the first book. It was great. And I cannot wait to finish the rest of the books in here. So there's that. And then the other books I read are Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. This was a five star. Um, what did I oh, I haven't rated the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or the book that I have. I haven't rated it because I haven't finished the entire thing, but I would rate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy four stars um, 
for the first book. And then this was five stars. And this is just Neil Gaiman's retelling of Norse myths. And it was interesting. I don't, I didn't know a lot about Norse mythology going into this. And now I feel like I know so much more. And it was quite lovely and I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I wish you would do this for all different kinds of mythology because wow, I enjoyed it. I would read literally almost anything Neil Gaiman wrote. Um, then I read Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. I hated this book. When it comes down to it, I hated it. Um, it's everything that I don't like in science fiction. Let's just put it that way. Um, I won't harp on this book too much because my husband does love it and I don't want to talk shit about it too much. Um, he really enjoyed this book. And for me, I didn't like it at all. Um, what I will say is I didn't like Ender. Um, his character was basically child genius and that was it. Like um, even during the scenes where he was getting emotional, like I felt nothing. I felt nothing. I was like, okay, all right. Cause I didn't connect with him. Um, I didn't really connect with any of the other characters, but I liked Bean. I did like Bean. He was actually like interesting. And I, I, I don't know, I, something about his character just stuck out to me. He felt like a three dimensional character to me. Um, the rest of the characters were just whatever. And I was getting some of them confused. I thought some characters were other characters and then I found out I was wrong. I was like, okay, wait, who are you again? Like, you know, I was, I, and then there was a lot of politics, which I'm not a politics person. So I don't like reading about it in my fiction. I don't like reading about it in my real life. Like I just, I don't care for politics point, like period. Um, like I just don't care for politics at all. So, um, there was far too much politics. There was just a lot about battles and battle simulations and like, and I, I do wonder, I did know the twist going into it. So I do wonder had I not known that if I would have cared more, but I don't think I would have. So, um, and then I also read Sorcery by Terry Pratchett. This is one of the books in the Discworld series. Um, great series, fantastic. It's a great fantasy series. And this one, this one had Rincewind in it. Um, there's like, so there's like 40 books in the series and different books follow different characters and some follow the same character over different books. Like um, there's whole like sub series within the series. So like if you look up the order to read Discworld in, there is a written order, the order which Terry Pratchett wrote them. And then there's like Rincewind series and the Wishes series and you know, just different characters that you can follow their arcs. Um, and this one had Rincewind in it and I, I really enjoy Rincewind. He's a fun character. Um, so I always enjoy finding the ones that um, he's in, but I am reading them in the written order. So the next one, which I have, yeah, I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, I have it. I'm buying them as I read them. So we'll talk about that in a second. And then I also read The Doll's House. This is um, a few of the Sandman comics in one, uh, one book. And this was really good. Again, five stars. Um, oh, and I think I gave Sorcery four stars. I think so. Um, but yeah, pretty much anything Neil Gaiman writes, I give five stars, but, um, it's just kind of a given, but this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this. I'm really enjoying this comic series. Um, as I kind of knew I would because it's Neil Gaiman's. Um, and I'm not going to tell you anything about it because you should read them. They're great. So go find the Sandman comics and read them. Um, then we have Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire. I also really enjoyed this. That This series is also fantastic. Um, so we follow Reagan, who 
Um, she, in our world, she loves horses and she's friends with this super controlling girl who, you know, has this very specific idea of what girls should be and how they should act and what they should like. And she gets sent to this world of equine, of horse-like mythical creatures. And uh, they don't even know what horses are. Um, but she gets into this world and there's centaurs and kelpies and all, all kinds of creatures. And, um, and it's just a really good story. And I really enjoyed Reagan. I hope we get to see her again. Um, just fantastic. Fantastic. And these are nice novella length reads. They're not very long but they pack a punch. And then I finally finished Frankenstein and I hated it. <laughs> um, truthful, truthfully, I almost DNF'd it because, oh my God, it was painful. <laughs> It was painful to try to get through. I did not enjoy it. There were parts that I enjoyed at first, but then it just kept going and going and going. And like, I appreciate what this story did for horror as a genre, but my God. <laughs> also, I agree with Paperback Dreams in that the story behind the, the the book Frankenstein is so much more interesting than the actual story Frankenstein. Like, it was painful <laughs> and I don't want to read it ever again. Um, but it was interesting. I had never read it. I had seen countless adaptations of it, but I'd never read it. Um, so that was interesting and I am glad that I experienced it, I guess. Um, I, I don't know, it was boring. It was just boring. It was mind numbingly boring. So if uh, you, wanna, you wanna learn more about Frankenstein, just watch a documentary on it or something. Go to the Wikipedia article, read that. That is a thousand times. Read the summary of Frankenstein so much interest so much more interesting and so much shorter <laughs> i am an asshole i'm sorry but oh my god it's so bad anyway um moving on okay so that is everything that i read in may or er, so that is everything that i read in april now let's talk about what i'm reading in may shall we so I am going to continue reading Penny Dreadfuls, which is this book, um, the one that had Frankenstein in it. The next book is The Adventure of the German Student by Washington Irving. Let's see. How long is that? Oh, that's not. Okay, so Frankenstein's pretty long, but then the rest are fairly short from what I can see. Yeah, and then at the end, it looks like um, another longer like a um, novel or not novel but like sh um novella i guess so um the next story is uh the adventure of the german student and then there's the werewolf the legend of the limousine limousine not limousine it can't be limousine I don't know. And then The Pit and the Pendulum, Sonny Bean the Man-Eater, Aurelia, or The Tale of a Ghoul. I'm just gonna read as many of these as I can um, to, to set an actual goal for myself. I'm gonna say five. I'm gonna read five of the short stories. Um, I want to get to five of them. So I will read as many as I can, but I have to read at least five. Let's say that. So that is the first thing. And then the second thing I'm going to be reading is the next, uh, next Sandman volume, which is Dream Country. And I am really looking forward to this. What is this one about? Four unique episodes make up the tapestry of this third of 12 volumes collecting... Let's see. 
The World Fantasy Award winning tale of first performance of William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, the story of Calliope, sorry if I said that wrong, a beautiful muse enslaved by novelists to feed his need for material, a cat's eye view of the tyranny of mankind, and the final memoir of an immortal, indi an immortal, destru indestructible woman who only wants to die. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. I look forward to it. I, I also like going into them not really knowing what's happening. I think it adds the experience. This is the next book. This is Terry Pratchett's Weird Sisters. Word Sisters? I'm going to go with Weird Sisters. Um, meet Granny Weatherwax, the most highly regarded non-leader of a coven of non-social witches could ever have. Generally, these loners don't get involved in anything, much less royal intrigue, but then there are those times they can't help it. As Granny Weatherwax is about to discover, though, it's a lot harder to stir up trouble in the castle than some theatrical types would have you think, even when you've got a few unexpected spells up your sleeve. And apparently this is the first book in the Witches subseries of the series, so whatever that means. Um, I think that makes sense, I don't know, but... Um, if you, if you look up like a Wikipedia article, you'll see what I mean. Um, but anyway, there's that. And then the rest of the books. I have four other books that I would like to get to. Two are shorter. Uh, one is kind of mid-length and one is pretty long. So the first one is a childhood read and that is The Witch of Blackbird Pond. And this is about a girl. Let me see if I can remember. This is about a girl who is essentially adopted into this family, right? She's related to them, but um, she's adopted into their family. She moves to, yeah, this is uh, when the colonies were still a thing. Um, she is moved to the uh, Connecticut colony, Connecticut colony, and there she becomes suspected of being a witch, basically. And it's just, yeah, that's, that's basically the story. Um, because she becomes friends with a woman who is viewed as a witch herself in the community. And because they become friends, Kit is suspected of witchcraft. And that's all I remember. And that's all the blurb says. I don't remember what else happens. And then this is one I've not read before. This is Jules Verne, Journey to the Center of the Earth. I also have Around the World in 80 Days, but I thought I would try this one first. Um, but yeah, it's about people who go to the center of the earth. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna read that. I don't know. Has anyone else seen the movie? Um, it had the guy from The Mummy in it. I don't know his name, but he's iconic because of The Mummy. Um, is anybody else seeing Journey to the Center of the Earth? Because wow. Wow. <sighs> anyway. So um, the next book is one that I didn't get to from last month. This is Welcome to Night Vale. Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Ow. <laughs> I'm a fucking mess today. Um, so yeah. Gonna read this. I'm not very informed today. Uh... And then the last book, which I attempted to start reading months ago, never started and promptly forgot about it until recently, is Illuminae. I'm embarrassed because I meant to read this months ago. Basically, this is a, like, is this a dossier? I guess it's a dossier. Basically, it's like a mixed media, like, novel. So there's all kinds of different, like, formats in here. 
and I don't, I could not tell you what the story's about, but I don't really want to know what it's about. Um, what I remember, if I'm wrong, that's okay. I will learn. But um, what I remember is it is about a couple people on a ship. Like without the slip cover, look at this. It's just, it's so cool. It's so cool. I love it. And this is actually an arc. I bought the second hand, which I, if you don't know, you're not supposed to resell arcs. Um, but I have actually gotten my hands on a couple over the years because they did get sold to like secondhand bookstores. Um, but generally you're not, you're not supposed to sell arcs, just so you know. <sighs> anyway, yeah, I'm going to read this. And this is also science fiction, in case you're not familiar with Illumine. And if I like it, which I think I will, um, I really, really think I will. Um, Mostly because Books and Lala, she doesn't like um, science fiction either, but she loved, loved Illumine. So I'm hoping that is a good sign for me and that I will also be in that boat. So there you have it. That is what I'm reading in May. And with uh, Penny Dreadfuls, I would ideally like to get through all of the short stories this month, but I don't think that's gonna happen um, because the next month I could read Sweeney Todd and then be done with it. But I am going to make as much progress as I can, read at least five of the short stories and call it a good month. Um, but yeah, so that is everything I'm reading. Let me know if you would still like me to talk about, uh, well, no, no. Um, and again, I'm going to reevaluate the makeup, you know, project pan situation and get back to you guys. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what are you reading in this beautiful month of May and what did you read last month, if anything. And if you didn't, that's okay. Some months are like that. Um, we, all, we all go through it. We all go through dips in our productivity with reading. So it's fine. But um, yeah. And let me know, is there any other book related bookish content you would like to see from me? Um, yeah, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day or night wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.